Take your time. All right, we'll get started. Go ahead. Well, this week, you know, I challenged the kids to get better this week. So our motto this week was Nebraska versus Nebraska. Not worry about Indiana. To get ready and to get better as an individual team. And to get the uh, fundamentals cleaned up and get better in all three phases of the game. Coach, this is the first time you know in a long time that this group has gotten blown out. I mean, they've played a lot of close games. So how did they kind of respond to that? It's something they haven't experienced in a few years. Well, like I said on Saturday, that's on me. I should have slowed the ball down and huddled and took some possessions away from Oklahoma, and I didn't do that. And that's on me. But they respond. They responded great today. They responded great yesterday. Machine's a good man and a good coach. But the numbers didn't add up. I didn't see us getting better. You know, for four weeks I didn't see us getting better from week one to week four. So, you know, I had to make a decision, the best decision for the kids because it's about the boys. So I had to make the best decision for the boys. And in a short period of time, where can you improve on this defense? Like how how do you do it in just a short period of time like this? Start with fundamentals, lining up, getting lined up, tackling, you know, being in your gap, being where you're supposed to be in your coverage. So it just goes back to basic fundamentals. I think you, guys, uh, you had a player say that you guys hadn't tackled in the four years he's been here. Is that, is that true? I don't know. I hadn't been here for four years. Well, okay. You know, I, I don't. I don't you've I, been here this year. We, we tackled. We tackled when I when I took over. We tackled in scrimmages before that. Mickey, do you have an update on AJ Allen's status? Yeah, he had surgery yesterday. Um, he's back home. His mother's in town. He's doing fine. He came out of surgery, you know, well, and um, he's going to miss the miss the rest of the um, the season, and it's going to hurt us. But you know, Gabe's a, a capable of back of getting it done. Do you have any specifics you can share about his injury? Yeah, just get remark on it. Mickey, what's kind of the plan with special teams moving forward with Bill focusing more defensively? Joy Connors is going to take over, but the coaches that's been involved with special teams, Coach Rude, Applewhite, Beck, Fish, they're going to still do their part. Um, Bush is still look around and make sure things are okay, but Joy Connors is capable of doing the job. Do you envision some new defensive faces stepping up and, and getting opportunities that maybe we haven't seen on the field? Or how, how do you reshuffle things and maybe find some new life in that defense? I don't know, but I'll be to tell you next week because right now we're competing. It's Nebraska versus Nebraska, so everything's competition right now. Hey, Mickey, you work with Bill um, quite a bit. What, do you, what does he add to this defense? What, what, do, you, what do you think he can, he can bring with his personality experience? Well, he's going to detail it. I met Bill in 2018 when he came to us at LSU. He spent a lot of time with Dave Aranda. Dave Aranda is probably one of the best D coordinators in the country. But he's going to detail it. He's going to take it step by step. He's going to make sure the fundamentals are solid. How does that affect special teams coaching? Is someone else going to step in, or is Bush still going to do a lot of the special teams? Yes, Joey Connors is going to step in. I'm curious to go back to the comment about should have puddled up, slowed the ball down. Did you think about that during the game, and when did you maybe arrive at that conclusion about your team and, and wanting to protect the defense a little bit? It was too late when I thought about it. It's 35-7. I should have I should have made that decision on Thursday. That's why I said it's on me. I made that mistake, and I can own it. I can own it. Is that? Would you just say that's lack of head coaching experience at that point? If that's what you want to say, probably so. As my mom said. What, what do you think that would have done? You guys had kind of sat on the ball. How do you think that might have helped the, the game flow? I don't know, but I got to do everything in my powers to help the kids when, when we're in a situation like that. I don't know how it would have ended. It could, probably, it could have ended the same way, but I got to do a better job of that. And then how do you approach that tempo, offensive tempo decision going through the Big Ten now? Is it a week-by-week -week process where you look at your opponent, or, or would you like to see this team slow it down from now on out? We will slow it down. So it's going to be opponent by opponent, but we will slow it down. Help the defense out a little bit. Is that something Coach Whipple has expressed too, that hey, maybe we, we have to slow it down to protect the defense? Yes, he understands that. Whipple's been a head coach before, so he understands what we need to do. 
when a team's been through as much change as this one, and I don't just mean the last two weeks, but going to Ireland, even all the way back to the coaching changes, how, how do you get them to maybe change midstream, but also get their chins up a little bit when, when they've had to go through so much change? Keep encouraging them and let them know that I have their best interests at hand, that I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure I make them a better football team. I'm going to hold everybody accountable from coaches all the way to players and keep encouraging them that we can get better if we come out and give the effort. But you're right, we got to keep their chins up because they have been through some change. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I know Alex, you guys won a national title. Everything went well in 2019. It wasn't always perfect. How much do you draw upon your experience at LSU in this position? A lot. I go back to how we practice at LSU. You know, less reps, less reps, speed it up a little bit more, you know, cut down on it, simplify some things, and not, not coach the athleticism out of them and get them playing fast on both sides of the ball. Well, all three sides of the ball, special teams also. What about the outside noise? Um, how, how do you deal with that with your players? We talk to them about blocking out the noise. It's fans. That's what fans do. Okay, fans, is not, they're not going to control the way I think or what the decisions I'm going to make. But it's fans. They have their right to do that. It's America. They can do that. They can express themselves. But you got to block it out. If you don't want to hear it, don't read it. Do you, foresee, do you foresee more changes being made on the coaching staff, or is it going to be a week-by-week thing? I don't know. I can't tell you that. I wish I could, but I, I can't tell you that. What is the schedule this week with the bye? I mean, how often do you go uh, practice? Or not? We'll go tomorrow. We'll lift Thursday. They'll be all Friday, Saturday. Be back in on Sunday. What's your recruiting plan? I mean, obviously with the turmoil, but you guys will go out. What's the plan for coaches going out on the road this week? We're going to recruit like we're going to be here. That's the, that's the right thing to do. So we're going to send coaches out on Wednesday. They're going to be out Wednesday night. Then Thursday and Friday they'll recruit. They'll get back in here on Saturday. The ones who don't have a game, I'll, I'll be on the road Friday. I'll be in Monroe on Friday, be in New Orleans on Saturday. I'll be back here Sunday. No, we're, going to, we're going to do the job the right way. We're going to do things the right way here. We're not going to sabotage the place knowing, saying that we might not be here. The, the best thing to do, the most professional thing to do, is to do things the right way. Miles Farmer's press conference had very honest comments, I think, from him. How did you how did you receive those comments that he made and what conversation? What did he say? Uh, it, Come on, we family. Go ahead. No, I told you I don't I don't listen to all that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think he was just really frank about well he's the one who said that they didn't tackle for mm -hmm. but also this idea of we're not in there, and so like the things that they have to fix are within within the house, and uh, yeah. What did you? I, if you didn't hear it, then it would be no, nah, no. Nah. I mean, no. This, these kids are emotional. They twenty year old kids after a loss. The kids are emotional. You ask them questions, and they're gonna give you an emotional answer. I keep telling them, don't make business decisions with your feelings. And that's what I got to do a better job at when they get in front of press because that's the second time one of my players said something I, with emotion, being emotional. Can't be emotional when we're talking to you guys. I got to tell you the truth, but not be emotional. And Mickey, on the subject of recruiting, you had kids in last weekend, of course, and, and like you said, will be out this week. What, what, uh, what, what has been the, the, the reception or the, what have you heard from, from those players, their families, their coaches as this period of, of uh, uncertainty has gotten underway. Just speaking to the recruits last week and talking to them the last two weeks on the phone, they all in because we're selling the University of Nebraska. No matter who sits in this chair, you committed to the University of Nebraska. So we're selling the University of Nebraska. Like I said, we're going to go do things the right way. We're not going to try to sabotage anything. Well, if we, have, we don't get the job and we have to leave here, they're going to say we left this place better than we found it. So we're going to do things the right way. I expect my coaches to do it. I expect everybody to do their job. You mentioned Bill Bush's experience. Just kind of go back to that. Though. How tough is this assignment of going from what he was doing to something completely else? Or how much have you talked about what you might change with him or his philosophies of changing stuff in the middle of things? Well, we're going to use the same lingo. 
you know, probably less calls, but we're gonna use the same lingo. But on Bill is Bush, Bill, Bill is, Bill is built for this. He's sharp. He's gonna, like I say, he's gonna be detailed in his qualities. He, he's a really good, he's a really good football coach, and he'll, he'll take care of it. I understand, and Bill understand what I want. We, like I said, we, we spent time together at LSU, and we talked, we talked a lot when he was at LSU. He was the safety coach. I was the receiver coach. So we got to compete against each other and share notes and, and, and compete against and get after each other on the field. Some people think we don't like each other, but we do. We just get after each other on the field. What kind of defense would you like? A defense that stops the run and stops the pass and shut people out. That's a good defense. Is there anything schematic? or? No, uh, it's, 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 it's what Bill wants to do. He knows what he needs to do. We don't, I don't need to get into all of that because you know, we, it's a new coordinator, so we try to put less out there right now. No disrespect, though. Coach, before Coach Shenander was let go, he was working as the second defensive back coach. Is Coach Bush going to take over that role, or is someone else going to go back there as well? No, Coach Bush will take the safeties and the nickels. Thank you. What, what, what are the kids, what are their response? You've got eight games left. What, what, what are the goals? What, what have you told the kids about uh, what you guys can still accomplish? Well, we control our own destiny right now. We have eight conference games left, so we're gonna we're gonna get ready. We're gonna compete this week against ourselves. Next week we'll get ready for Indiana, but we're still gonna take one stop sign at a time. And the stop sign this week is Nebraska. Get Nebraska better. The next week will be Indiana, but they understand what, what what they can do. We told them today the ball's gonna be in your court here pretty soon. It's not what you're gonna do with it. How do you feel like your receivers have played? How do you think Casey has played up to this point? I was disappointed that we put the ball on the ground twice because they know the rules. The person that's going to strip the ball is the person you don't see. And it happened twice. What happened with Trey and Isaiah. So I'm disappointed with that. And they understand that. And Cass is going to get that fixed. We, we, we're not happy about that. And Casey, Casey's got to make throws. Casey's got to make third down throws. And he understands that. Just to clarify again, back to AJ, is he playing to red shirt? Yes, he's going to red shirt him. I'm sorry. He's going to red shirt him. He's out for the year. Cool. Hey, Mitty, what, what else have you learned in a week on the job as, as the interim guy to some of the challenges or, or some of the things that you wouldn't have expected before the No, that, that is a, it's, it's things I need to fix. It's things I need to focus on. And I can't, I can't assume anything. That every, everything from A to Z, I got to make sure that I, 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 you know, cross every T, dot every I. I learned a lot from that first game. But it was a quick turnaround for me, but it's no excuse. I got to handle that better than I. Like I said before, I walked up to that mic and I said, it's on me. It's not on my kids, it's not on my coaches. That was on me. Other, other than the tempo piece, what were some other things maybe that you took away upon further review? Probably get the young guys in quicker than we did. Let the young guys get in there so we can get, get them on film and see what they can do. Else other than AJ, who is that going to be out long term? Is, is there anybody after that game? No, um, Brian's fine. Brian's fine. He's um, just a sprained ankle. He's going to be good. He finished punting, and um, you know, he's he's that was a, that was tough for him to do, but he did it. It happened on the tackle. Yes. Can't punt the ball in the middle of the field, so you better make that tackle. Uh, all in all, making you think the bye week came at a good time? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's it. You asked me that question. You know, it was a, that was a good, this is, we needed this bye week. We needed this bye week to, re, to just to reset. These kids haven't had a chance to reset. They they had to go from here to here, and then here. It wasn't like it wasn't Oklahoma Panhandle coming in here. It was OU coming in here. So let's be real about it. Okay. So yeah, that was it was a good bye week. Anything else for coach? Thanks. Man, I appreciate you guys.